through the first eight chapters of Mark, the same refrain has come back when people encounter Jesus. They don't get him. They don't understand him. They see him, but they don't perceive him. They hear him, but they don't understand him. They're around him, but their hearts are hard. And so what Mark is trying to do here is to show you that what Jesus does for every single person is he allows them to see when they otherwise could not. And this also explains the reason that Jesus does the miracle in this kind of weird way, where he half heals the guy and then fully heals him. It's as if to say, when Jesus comes to you, he allows you to see him in part, to understand him in it in a minor way, to understand him enough that you can believe in him. But there is a promise that later he will come back and once again he will place his hands on you and you will be able to see everything clearly. See, this story is the story of every one of our lives. Because we were all like the people who kept saying through the first eight chapters, who is this? We're like the Pharisees who complained when Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners. We are the people who couldn't understand why it seemed like Jesus was changing the rules. We are his brothers and sisters who sometimes thought he was crazy. We are the disciples who were terrified in the storm even when Jesus was right there with them. We are the Gentiles who told Jesus to go away after he ruined our economy. We are the mourners who laugh when Jesus says the girl is only sleeping. We are those who dismiss Jesus because we feel like we know him already. We're the ones who don't believe that Jesus can feed 4,000 or 5,000. We're the ones who think Jesus walking on water is just an aberration of our minds. We're like Peter who claims that Jesus is the Messiah, but later in the conversation forgets what that means. And we're the Pharisees, filled with the yeast of our own good works, and like Herod, filled with the yeast of our own self-perceived status. We all see Jesus, but we don't see him clearly. We never really get Jesus. But Jesus gets us. In the same way that we were blind spiritually, like this man was blind physically, Jesus comes to us and he places a little bit of water and himself on our eyes so we can see enough to know him and to believe in him so that someday he can come back and put his nail-pierced hands on us a second time and bring us to a place where we see everything clearly. That's the promise of the gospel. That's the message of Christianity. That's the message of Mark's gospel that we are not good enough by ourselves and we never will be. But Jesus saves messed up people. He saves failures. He saves ragamuffins. He saves people who have wrecked their life. And he saves not because we asked for it, because we deserved it, but because he is gracious. Because he is willing to go out of his way to find us, to take us out of our previous life, like he took that man out of the town and heal us. And then to say, don't even go back into the town. I've made you different. Don't go back to your old life. The life I want you to live is a life of complete freedom where you don't have to pull it off. You don't have to be enough. You don't have to have that status. You don't have to be morally superior to anyone because I, God, have declared that you are holy. Holy. 